What's up, everybody? This is Chuck Creek, Murray K. Jigsaw, allhiphop.com welcomes MC Shaw Rock to the studio for the first time. No doubt. It's How you been doing? Many years. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? I'm here. I'm here with my homie. That's what's up. You know, I was just happy when you accepted my. Facebook request? We go way back. <laughs> we, we did an interview before, but we go way back. Okay. Much respect to allhiphop.com and all that you have did for hip-hop culture. Salute. Well, yeah. first of all, I got I to gotta thank you for all that you've done. You know, I mean, it's it's um, a lot of firsts out here. Mm -hmm. Well, let me take that back. It's not, there's a lot of stuff out here, but there's only one first. That's a gift and a curse. Yeah. You know that, right? I know. Oh, I know. That's a gift. Yeah, I know. Well, first, let me, let me, I just want to run a few things down because I, I had to pull the phone out and, and, and look at a few things. So let's, let's just run this down real quick. Okay. Hip hop culture's first female MC mm -hmm. slash rapper. Right. Right. The mother of the mic. Right. A member, former, formal member of the Funky Four Plus One. The first group to have a legitimate record deal. Mm -hmm. um, the first group on Saturday Night Live, hip hop, right, right. hip hop group on Saturday Night Live, and on TV, and on TV. Right. This was in '81. Absolutely crazy. Yes. Um, B Street. Mm -hmm. That's when I first saw you visually. Really? Yeah. Okay. First time on B Street. Okay. Um, that I recall. Um, that was 84. I don't think yeah. I was, you know, Saturday Night Live, I was around, but, you know. True. Um, and a bunch of accolades and, you know, docu, you know, endless accolades yes, from, from the city and beyond. Yes, sir. So, now that we have you again, let's talk. First, like, let's just go back to this, this whole MC thing and how you got started. Because, you know, when we think of... MCs now and rappers now, we, we take it for granted. We, we don't even think about the exact origins of this culture any, too much anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we do, but to me it's very surface level. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about when you first started and what inspired you and what were the conditions? Like when we think about, you know, uh, women that are in the hip hop culture, I'm trying to stop saying females because like they get on me about that sometimes. But they do. I mean, yeah. I mean that's women, females. Um, you yeah. know, it started off. I mean, it, it's it's whatever. Yeah. You know? We'll talk about how you started. Okay. So for the audience that don't know who MC Shaw Rock is, as Chuck said, um, I'm a former member of the Funky Four. Now I'm an original member of the Funky Four. But let's go back. How I got into hip hop culture, which it wasn't called hip hop culture at that time was in 1976 when I was a B-girl. Right. Great dancer. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what I did, you know. Um, in the Bronx, you know, all around the Bronx used to travel, nomadic B-girl that was, would travel to every part of the Bronx that would play music mm -hmm. that I wanted to hear, you know, or, or that those break beats that I wanted to hear. So I did that, you know, for about a year. And a year later, you know, and most people like, you know, most people that were break dancers or, or B girls or B boys, not all became MCs. Okay. Like your Melly Mel's, right. your Cowboys, you know, um, your your your, your um, KK Rockwells and you know Shaw Rock. Mm -hmm. So in 1977, the end of the beginning of the, um, 78, you know, I became an MC. Mm -hmm. But what I did was not only did I become an MC, I became an MC to help create the Funky Four which was an, a group that consisted of all males but one female. And so in 1977, I became the first female MC of, of hip hop culture that we call now, the first fem, female MC to be a part of an all, an all male group. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm a founding member of hip hop culture. Uh -huh. Why? Because I was on the front line uh -huh. in 77 and 78 when those uh, you know, those accolades of, of hip hop culture was begin to start, you know, coming mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and the way that we would rhyme, the rhyming skills, the music, mm -hmm. you know, the graffiti, all of that stuff that was coming together to make the culture what we know mm -hmm. to be today or what, what you know, it's supposed right. to be celebrated with all the elements today. 
Okay. Now, there's a lot of talk about the Bronx, uh, what it was like at that time, um, documentaries, even some TV shows, and some of them um, are fictionalized. Um, can you tell people how, how it was um, for you and for others in the culture at that point? Well, you know, being the first female MC of hip-hop culture as well as a, as a founding member, you had to deal with a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I do know that um, a lot of the movies that you may have seen in the past or, you know, would sort of kind of like water it down of mm -hmm. what was really going on in the Bronx. And so they sort of kind of skip the 70s mm -hmm. and they talk mm -hmm. about, okay, DJ Cool Herc being the founding, you know, father of hip-hop, but they don't really touch down on what was really, really going on. Mm -hmm. And so... I was talking to you earlier, and I'm in the process of filming my movie titled Luminary Icon. It's about my journey as the first female MC, founder member of hip hop culture, you know, as well as many other accolades that, that I have in reference to the, the, the journey that I had to went, go, to, go through in the late 70s, yeah. you know, in order to, um, you know, make this culture what, what it is or what it's supposed to be. Now, most people that know Shah Rock, or maybe say MC Sharrock and you have, you know, your Fat Joes, your your your, your Puffies, your Beast, Beastie Boys, you know, mm -hmm. MC Light, whatever. A lot of them know what I did before records in 1979, mm -hmm. right? Because right. 1979 is one of those pivotal, pivotal years, like 1977. 1979 mm -hmm. is when, you know, Select Crew made records. Yeah. I was a part of that record era yeah. in 1979. But my... um. My accolades started before Ricket. I'm right. that street chick that was yeah. on the ground in those parks and those schools and um, you know the, the, the centers, mm -hmm. you know the projects, right. break dancing, emceeing, all of that prior mm -hmm. to records. Right. And so there's a difference you know in, in what you may have seen or what may have been told and a lot of information and I say this humbly guys, were suppressed. Because I wasn't in New York, you know, I had moved out of New York like back in 85, you know, mm -hmm. and so that allowed many people to run around and tell different stories that weren't true, mm -hmm. you know, about the culture. Mm -hmm. But see, I carry the culture in my heart. And so when I found out that all of these, you know, misconceptions of who was this and who was that, yeah. and who was the first female and Shah Rock is not the first female MC and this and that, then I started with the receipts. Yeah. I started showing proven, mm -hmm. word of mouth, flyers, mm -hmm. documentation, mm -hmm. and say, okay, tell me what you have did for the culture that Shah Rock didn't do right. first. And so, you know, I needed to let people know, you know, the true history, the true facts of what was going on, how it went down, how I am the first female MC of hip hop culture who led this culture forward with those guys on those front lines. I did that. And although there were other females that came after me, uh -huh. Shah Rock held New York City down. Right. Held New York, New York City down, not just the Bronx, but every borough in New York City knew who Shah Rock was. Now and so you, I need you, to tell you, that story. Again, giving people the context, uh, I was you know, on YouTube a little bit just doing like just some light research, and I was mm -hmm. just like, she's on stage with Melly Mel. Now that alone, mm -hmm says a lot, mm -hmm. you know, just for anybody that's even on the sidelines mm -hmm. of the culture. But to know that you were actually going out and every borough, like a lot of people talk about this and I'm, I'm not a native New Yorker, so I can't speak on it so much, but a lot of people are like, you could, a lot of, a lot of people couldn't go to other boroughs or mm -hmm. didn't go to other boroughs. And, and I did that, and I did that. And why? Because um, in New York City, and, and you know, and I'll, I'll tell the story, I don't want to give too much of the movie or okay. whatever, but because, you know, the Funky Four traveled, we wasn't just like locally in the Bronx, yeah. we traveled to every borough uh -huh. in the Bronx, I mean in New York City, and this is why people knew who I was, uh -huh. as well as the Funky Four, because we didn't just stay local, we right. took it around, and because we did that, that's what landed us on Saturday Night Live in right. 1981, to be in the first, you know, a hip-hop group you know, on, on um, television, simply because people knew, you know, people knew who we were from the Fab Five Freddies, you know, that had let uh, Debbie Harry from Blondie know that we were like mm -hmm. the best, you know, it was always us and Melly Mel, the Furious Five, that were battling each other. So right. battling didn't start in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Battling started in the 70s because the, the two main groups that were battling all the time was the Furious Five or the Furious Four at that time and the Funky Four. And then when Raheem left my group, which mm. Raheem was with the original Funky uh -huh. Four first, 
we were close friends. He left my group to go to the Furious Five. I left. When I came back, I became the plus one because they got two new members. And Raheem became, you know, a part of the Fur of the Furious He's Four right. MCs, which they was the Furious Five. Right, right, and right. so we battling began in the 70s, especially with the Furious Five or the Furious Four MCs and the Funky Four MCs. So battling, battling didn't start mm. in the 80s. It was just a different form of battling. But for yeah. us, it was um, it was routines, mm -hmm. harmonizing, mm -hmm. stage shows, mm -hmm. rhyming, you know, rhyming, um, you know, uh, formats or whatever. Right. So we, we started the battling right. aspects in the 70s. Okay. From the Audubon Ballroom to the PAL to, to you know, many different spots, you know, the Furious Five and the Funky Four did that, you know, um, and the Funky Four Plus One did that, you know, in, in, in New York City at the time. And there's flyers, you know, you can go back to 79, you can go back to uh, 78 or 81 and see that battling begin in, in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the 70s and in, in, in 79, 80, 81. You know? All right. So let me, I want to, I want to talk to you about uh, uh, women in hip hop or women in rap, whatever you want to call it. Okay. But let's talk right now because there's a huge, you know, conversation being take, taking place about women in hip hop. Um, I kind of started with Jermaine Dupree, but, but not really because we've been having these conversations. Um, what is your opinion and view on it? You know what, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I, I'm gonna always support the women. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I come up in the era where um, Everybody want to focus, well, what do you think about? And I was having this conversation with, you know, our friend over here today, and it was like, everybody want to focus on the, on why is it that, um, you know, the women, you know, the women, you know, talk about this, and they talk about that, and they mm -hmm. always talk about their private parts and this and that and, and all that stuff. My thing is that we in hip-hop always want to classify rap as just everything that has everything to do with hip-hop. Mm -hmm. I helped create this culture, so I, I look at it from a different standpoint. Mm -hmm. I look at it as rap is just one element. Mm -hmm. So when you start dealing with all the different types of elements and you're celebrating the elements, then we can talk about the culture and what it really means. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about rap music, now, if we all sound alike, and I'm talking about women, mm -hmm. if, and, and men too, but you ask the question of women, mm -hmm. if we all sound alike, you know what I'm saying? Then that's not what hip hop culture is about. Mm -hmm. So if you get into rapping, the element of hip hop, mm -hmm. if that's what, you know, uh, the way that Cardi B wants to rap, she has a right to do mm -hmm. that. Because mm -hmm. why? To be honest with you, she's saying things that women think, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. just won't say it. Right. And they say it be, and they do it behind closed doors, but right. they won't think it. Just like men think the same thing, but they won't say it. Right. But they want to, they want to, um, Contradicted, you know, right. of, of, of that uh, person's action or mm -hmm. whoever female that's out there. Now, what I do say is that you also have your your conscious of uh, of a female uh, artists that are dope MCs, mm -hmm. and then you have your other uh, uh, female artists that may have a different way of approach of where they're trying to target their audience. Right. So what I say is that. You know, I like a lot of things that yeah. Car Cardi B does, mm -hmm. but I also think that um, it should be, or Cardi B or any any other person, but I any other female that some may think is raunchy or whatever. Yeah. But I just I just feel like you know you everybody has an audience, yeah. and what she's doing or anybody else is targeting the audience in which is is buying and stuff and listening. Yeah. So instead of we complaining about it, whether or not it's right or wrong, if you're a female. And you 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 are talking or rhyming about conscious stuff, then target that audience right. because you're not going to get the audience yeah. that that other person get because that's what they're into. Right. So you target the audience and know your audience and stay true to your craft and don't worry about the next person. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it should be a balance. Mm -hmm. It should be a balance. And if you're on the radio and you're listening to the same thing, you know, all the time, okay, that's because those people are supporting what they want to hear. Yeah. And so, no, you know, you may not be able to find um, or listen to the type of music or that, you know, that you like, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, conscious mu music or, you know, different, you know, females that you really like to listen to, mm -hmm. unless you maybe got like Sirius XM or something like that, and, we, and everybody don't have that. Yeah. But my thing is that you have to 
if you support a certain type of MC or a certain type of rap rapper, then you have to target the audience in which your skills are. Yeah. Because you're not going to get it from the, that next one because that's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it should be a balance, you know, where you have that choice right. to be able to choose. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to change if that's what the people are asking for. Right. So instead of criticizing, find your audience. Yeah. Find an audience that, that that you like or whatever your craft is or your style of rapping or your style of um, rap, rhyming and mm -hmm. then target that audience because yeah. you're asking for something that you're not going to get. For it to change, these people love that certain type mm -hmm. of rhyming skills. Mm -hmm. are you, you have to respect it. When you, when you do your movie, uh, how are you going to do this movie? Because we've seen a few stories, Roxanne, Shantae comes to mind. Yeah, I'm a two sec to her, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we obviously aren't going to tell the same story. Yours will be set in, I guess, mostly the 70s, correct? Yeah, mine will never be the same because yeah. I helped this culture. Yeah. You know, I helped create the culture, yeah. so it would never never be the same. Yeah. And um, my thing is that just like Roxanne Shantae had her truth, mm -hmm. I'm going to have my truth. Yeah. And she told her truth from you know, from her beginnings of the culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would tell my my truth as a founding member of hip hop yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. So the stories would be different because our lives ran in different ways and yeah. different paths and whatever and stuff and you know, just like, you know, um my my story and her story, you know, there may be somebody else out there that may have a story to tell, you know, as well. Yeah. You know, but it's our truth. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to give, you know, the world the truth of how I became that girl yeah. to help move this culture forward. And how I became that girl that was inspirational to not only men mm -hmm. but women as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did um uh, did you ever get mad like say Debbie Debbie Harry was uh, you know, rapping and and, and, and you know, it was weird. You know what I mean? I mean, not, you know, not, no disrespect. I don't mean any disrespect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that was like '79, and 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 I think a lot of us might have been, you know, just a little. Taken. Yeah, it was. I don't think it was. It was. I don't know if it was '79. It was. It was after that. And let me tell you why. Because I think she came out with the record cards or whatever. But she came out like I think in in the '80s after we did. Um, after we did Saturday Night Live, mm. and then she came out with a, a song, I think, with Melly Mel or um, Fat Five Freddy Cars or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But my only thing is that I know that America, because I guess rap wasn't, even though, you know, the Sugar Hill Gang in 1979 had like one of the largest songs, mm -hmm. when Debbie Harry came out from Blondie, they felt like, and I didn't know this until years later because, you know, I started reading, you know, that they felt like she was the first MC. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the hell? Right. But my thing is that, much respect to her, but when people say stuff like that, and if you, if anybody that's tagging anybody with the first female MC, it is your responsibility mm -hmm. to shut that down and say, no, I'm not. Yeah. Even if you don't know the information, mm -hmm. do your research. Yeah. Find out. Because the research is out there. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Or the information is out there, I right. should say. And so it should have been, you know, um, anybody's um, responsibility to say, no, these mm -hmm. are my accolades. This is what yeah, I do. Yeah. And no, I'm not. I'm not that person. Yeah, right. You know. You understand what I'm saying? So that's, I'm not mad because, oh, I wasn't mad. I, I just didn't understand why you don't educate. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. you why you're not saying that no, you know, mm -hmm. th this person because if you are secure in your craft, which you know a lot of, a lot of people are, it's like and if you for the culture, you're supposed to educate and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, cuz it yeah. it'll come out. Huh? What would you say is your biggest obstacle? Your what was your biggest obstacle? What like I mean, yeah, I mean, right now it seems like women are are, are doing much better. But a lot of people had to just push and, and really kick doors down again in this day and age. Let me, Chuck, let me tell you what my bi biggest obstacle. I never had that back in the day. Okay. Why? Because they respected me. They didn't look at me as a, a female, but as an MC. An MC that was prolific, you know, mm -hmm. that held my own with the guys, the girls, anybody that was out there. I have more problems now mm -hmm. than I did before. Why? Because it's like when when you say that you're the first female MC, 
it's like I deal with even from my area, you know, people, yeah. oh, you know, it was it was a person that could have been before Shah Rock. It was a person that could have been this or could have mm-hmm. been that. But oh, this person could have been this female was was before Shah Rock. But what they don't tell you is that that female was not on the streets like MC Shah Rock was. Right. You may have one person say, Yes, yeah, she was with me. And the reason why they say that, that, that is like to solidify themselves, but there's mm-hmm. really no documentation, no nothing, no nothing. So right. when you really talk, when you, anybody that talk about Shot Rock was on the she- street, no, I held New York City down. But the biggest problem is, well, ooh, I don't know if Shot Rock was first. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but well, tell me who was and tell me how that person led this, this culture forward. Yeah. Tell me how that person did what Shot Rock did, because if that person was out there when I was, I would have ran across her. Right. Right? Yeah. I would have ran across you. Yeah. And if you was good at your craft and doing what you want to do, no one would have just known about Shah yeah. Rock. Right. You know, or, yeah. Yeah. you know, or, or, or let's take like Queen Lisa Lee. She's like, Queen mm-hmm. Lisa Lee is like one of, she's from the Zulu Nation. She's one of the most prolific MCs mm-hmm. I felt, and I'm very close to her. And then you have the Mercedes ladies, mm-hmm. you know, as yeah. well, right? I met one of the Mercedes yeah, ladies. Yeah, yeah, probably Sherry, way. right? Mm-hmm. But the thing is that those are my girls. Yeah. Though, you know, I was out on the street with them, so I yeah. know them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I can vouch for them, and, and not not that I they, I need to them to vouch for me, but they can't. Yeah. So unless you was on that street and you came across me, or the Mercedes ladies, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Then... You, you couldn't have been that one that was holding it down. But people like to do that because they don't want to give you the first. Yeah. But you're not gonna you're not giving me nothing. I'm taking it because it's mine it's because that's what I did. That's what we doing. That's what I did. Hey. That's what I did. Yeah. That's what I did. You you can't, no, you can't. Yeah. You can't. And so that's the busy busy, busy uh, I'm sorry, the, the the most obstacle. It's like letting people know mm-hmm. that I set it off. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? So I deal with that more now than I ever mm-hmm. did then because they knew what it was back then. Can you talk about the Chagall situation? You know, I'm yeah, just no problem. Look, dabble, touch, okay. touch. So when we talk about the Sugar Hill um, situation and what mm-hmm. Chuck is talking about is that um, back in, um, you know, the um, uh, 70, 79, well, 80, really, because I had a, the Funky Boy had a record deal and enjoyed records, was, which was like the biggest, um, what was like the first rap label, you know, mm-hmm. of, of MCs that was on there, the Funky Four, Treacherous Three, Spoony G, even before Sugar Hill. Yeah. And so this was MCs that was kicking butt, you know, like on, on the streets, like in the late 70s or whatever, that um, was under Enjoy label. But most of us, you know, um, went over to uh, Sugar Hill Records because, in, you know, Rama, you know, 80, Mm-hmm. We felt like, you know, okay, she got Sugar Hill Gang, you know, nice hit, you know, yeah. and they're Sylvia all over Robinson, Silver Robinson, Robinson right? Yeah. Sugar Hill Records, Sylvia Robinson. Well, she can do the same thing for us because yeah. with Bobby Robinson under Enjoy Records, we were creating our own um, venues. You know, we mm-hmm. made the record, people knew it, but we were all created our own venues where we had to, um, we had the record, but we were booking our own shows ourselves. Um, Sylvia Robinson, Sugar Hill, was, which was on a much larger scale. Much respect to her. That's what she did. You know, yeah. she knew her business, and um, you know, in, in, in eighty, you know, we signed with her. You know, and so, mm-hmm. you know, from from eighty on up until eighty three, eighty four, we must have did about seven or eight songs with her, the yeah. Funky Four, the Funky Four Plus One, and never received a dime yeah. from any songs. Right. Any songs. Not a dime. Not a dime. Not a dime from any songs. And so, what happened was, and um. Uh, I was over in Germany and I seen a box set of, mm. of records that had like, you know, it was, they were selling it for a hundred dollars. Wow. But I was I was in the military store, yeah. you know, and and it was the PX, you know, which the, the military calls it. And um, I am um, seeing it, the box set of a hundred of 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 a hundred dollars that had many songs from Sugar Hill Records in there. So I was like, man, you know, it's crazy selling all this money here for for a hundred dollars. I ain't getting a penny. Yeah. So when I got back to the states, um, um, I was over in Germany like 90, 90, um, 91 to ninety three. That first round when I got back to the, the states, mm-hmm. um, I seeked out lawyers to um, try to find out how I can get my money because when I called Sylvia uh, Sugar Records, she 
tried to act like she didn't know what, what I was talking yeah. about. Uh-huh. So I went straight, you know, and, and tried to seek out lawyers. Right. And um, New York City lawyers would not, you know, take care of it. They, they, they was going to handle me, uh, let me, you know, um, become a part of the lawsuit, but I had to give them crazy money from the start right. that I didn't have. That I didn't have to stay in court with her for many years. Yeah. So, um, you know, BMI, you know, told me about, you know, attorneys, you know, in, in Manhattan that would take care of me. I had to get an attorney's half, you know, and I agreed to that. I tried to bring in, you know, all the, you know, the people that was on the Sugar Hill label. And only one that signed on was the Furious Five. Mm-hmm. And so I filed a class that's in lawsuit, went to court, judge Dean that they were at fault, you know, and, um, you know, uh, because... The Furious Five sold more records, mm-hmm. records than the Funky Four. My attorney had them at the lead of the lawsuit, mm-hmm. although the rest of us was a part of the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And um, I filed a lawsuit. The judge deemed that they were, Sugar Hill was at fault. Mm-hmm. They had to pay. Uh-huh. And um, they paid. Right. You know, and they paid. So it's just right now, we're still into litigation because for the last couple of years, the, the accounting has not been given as the judge, as the previous judge deemed that they should. Right. So that's what I'm, I'm in court for now is my accounting and publishing and all that Still stuff. In court. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But if I, I don't get it, my kid's going to get it. Yeah. My right. kid's going to get it. If I'm not here to see it, that's all I want. I just I just want it to be taken care of. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to handle it. It's going yeah. gonna to take care of itself. Yeah. Now, let's. Um, Let's let's just talk, you know, how you feel about the the culture right now. You know, we've seen so many changes in the culture uh, from day one to now. Um, pre-recorded, before we started making records. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, you know, the, the golden era, which is like in the late 80s, so to speak, and to the 90s. And now, I mean, we're like 40 years in right now. So when you talk about the culture, you know, once again, are you uh-oh, talking about uh-oh. are you talking about rapping? Well, or are you talking well, about all the elements? Well, you know, speak. You can speak on all of it. I mean, obviously, we don't do a lot of graffiti. The dancing has been taken over. Uh, what, what, what was it taken over? Well, I see a lot of other races doing break dancing now more than any but, black but kids. You, but, I, now I see dancing, but, but not break dancing. But but listen, right? But you still have your underground, you know, uh, uh, b girls and b boys even in the states. I, I see crazy like, legs. Yeah, well, yeah, if legs, your legs is he, he's <laughs> on it. He's on it, and yeah. then overseas. But that that's because when you when you start dealing with like the overseas uh, uh, people, mm-hmm. they know hip hop culture. Better than yeah. the United States do. And yeah. what they do is they study the craft. For every element, they study the craft and they get it down and they get mm-hmm. it down and they mimic. And not saying that that's bad, mm-hmm. but it's like they appreciate all the elements. And no, at our age, we ain't got to be running around here break dancing on a, you mm-hmm. know, I still do it. I do the up rocks, you know, that's I do what up I do. Rock too. Yeah, right. When I, I feel like No, nah, right. When you hear James <laughs> Brown or something <laughs> right. like that, you do the up rock. You know, and stuff, because that's that's what I feel is the music. Mm-hmm. And so when you talk about what I feel about the culture today, when you really look at it, um, and, and, and if people don't know, everything that the young kids are going through these days, or even, you know, people is we went through the drugs. we I mean, the drug scene. We went through the heroin scene. We went yeah. through the crack scene. We went through uh, the stick-up kids, the robbery, the boosting, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. We, did, we went through that area. It's nothing that they're going through now that we mm-hmm. didn't do in the 70s. Right. The problem is, is that when I was growing up, you know, in 76 and 77, when I got into hip hop, is that with with everything that was going around us then, all elements of the culture was a way for us to be able to get away from all that stuff. That was like our safe haven. You understand what I'm saying? For us to be able to get away from all the negativity Mm -hmm. that was going on with us in New York City. Mm -hmm. So when when you celebrate music, let's just say you're not out there breakdancing, and I don't expect you, you do. Yeah. Or you're not out there drawing graffiti on a wall. You know what I'm saying? But you but but you do have a DJ and you do you have an MC or rapping and you have mm-hmm. the music. So when you in a club or you in a party or you you just in your element, 
that element is supposed to be your safe haven, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because that was a way for us to get away from all the shootouts, you know, and, yeah. and, and stick up and all that stuff. That was our safe haven was to go into that club or go into that party and just fall back. Yeah. And just listen to all of those beats and those music to take you away from everything that was going you know, to you on the yeah. outside. Yeah. So when you bring all that negative with you, or you have it traveling with you because you got beef with everybody and their mothers, yeah. that's, then you take it away from what it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. Peace, unity, having fun in your element yeah. of hip hop. Uh -huh. Negativity is supposed to stay away. Right. Because that was the whole idea of this culture was to, 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 to get into our zone and stay away from all the crazy stuff that was on the outside. You know, and so that's 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 what I see different. Yeah. Because why would you go back to what we try to get away from? Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know that unless you study the, the history yeah. or the elders yeah. or, or anybody that, that can get out there and educate and say, Okay, not just that it's peace, unity and having fun, but why? Why do we get away from it's that? It's hard though now because you're supposed to protect. You're yeah. supposed to protect your space. It's hard because now I think so many kids are so apart away from that original concept, and unfortunately, we haven't shared that with them. Right. Those of us that know, or those of the of us that were around. Right, right. And I think I think that's that that's the big biggest problem because a lot of times you know uh, people like to say, well, the youth they doing this and you know mm -hmm. they doing this and they all of this and you know they don't. You know, I don't want to hear that kind of music because it's so degrading. Right. Okay, but instead of us talking about it, or instead of us, you know, belittling them on what they're doing, just educate. Yeah. Give them options. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they have to take it, and it doesn't mean that we have to enforce our beliefs on them. But mm -hmm. you have to give them options, and you have to give you know the people uh, education, and just let them be able to say, okay, I got a common ground. Right. Let me balance it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Or let me be able to adapt to my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, switch up on them a little bit, cause that that's what makes a good MC. And if it's all about money for you, then it's all about money for you. But I'm gonna tell you what makes you long lasting, and what you're doing is being able to adapt to your environment and flip on them when they, they don't think you can flip on them. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? That's how you keep your money going. Mm, when you show them that's... something that they think that you can't handle, and I know y'all listening and y'all gonna do this too, you flip on them and you show them, listen, I could adapt to my value. You say I can't do it. You say I rhyme this way. I rhyme that certain way. Let me show you how I can flip it. And that's how your legacy will always continue because you would never be known as just that MC or that rapper that continues to um, mellow out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing. Right. Right. You know, you, you mm -hmm. got to learn to adapt to your environment because I can do it. Right. I can adapt yeah. to my environment. But every rap. style, I, yeah, I still MC. You still have, oh, okay. I still okay. MC. Okay. Right. I still okay. MC. I mean, you know that. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So I can adapt to anything. Now, will I do it? Now, okay, wait. How many I kids? Can adapt. How many kids okay. you have? I have, I have four. I have, okay. I have a, oh, my my oldest daughter should be thirty eight. Okay. My son oh. will be uh, my okay. son is thir thirty five. Okay. My second oldest thirty five. My son Keith is twenty five. Okay. And then my my son Sincere, the baby just turned eighteen. Okay. So okay. they no are they kids. are they rapping at all? Nah, nah. They my family is a martial arts family. Uh -huh. you know, we from. Well, well, from New York, you know, the martial arts is a, is a thing that we grew up on. You know, okay. they do rap and martial arts. So my family is what martial arts. So we went like run like the, one of the largest martial arts schools in Texas. Okay. You know, okay. and so you know, my my sons is into martial arts, and you know, okay. my daughter she's like my right hand. So you know, what am I I'm doing? And she makes whatever I'm doing, she makes sure that that everything gets like happening. You know. Nice, stuff, nice. Yeah. So um, yo, the get down. Now that was that was a a show on Netflix that was really expensive and uh, it showed it was it was different because it showed the seventies part of hip hop that we don't see or talk about as much, right? Now I've talked to people quite a few. And what they tell you? Well, talk, tell the truth. Well, let's 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 not say. I'll tell you what they said after. You tell me what you No, nah, you started it. Tell me first <laughs> what they well, said. Well, most people didn't, didn't, didn't care for it. You know what I'm saying? Why, uh, why was that? Uh, because it was not authentic. 
to them. It, it, it wasn't authentic to me. Okay. I wasn't even here. Okay. So uh, to me, it was a very soap opera-ish and a little glossy. Like, I just didn't understand why it was so pretty. Um, I mean, I do now because I know who was behind it. Okay. You know what I mean? So um, that's, that's how I feel about it now. Okay. My thoughts don't matter because I'm not the first anything of hip hop. Okay, so let me let me let me uh, give you my take. Okay, I didn't watch it. Uh. I didn't see no episodes. Okay, but the young kids, you know, that were friends of my sons mm -hmm. and daughters, they say, you know, Miss um, Sharak, I, I I thought those groups were like Grandmaster Flash and the Funky yeah. Four, you know, because right. they had the girl. So I didn't see it. Mm. So a lot of them did like it, but because I didn't see it, I heard about it. I want to make sure that when I film Luminary Icon, it is the truth. Mm -hmm. It is the truth of the '70s of what went down mm -hmm. the right way. Yeah. And this is why I spoke to you earlier: is that I would uh, I, my my thing is to always have full control mm -hmm. as to how my story is told. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people are expecting me to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Because right. I was on that front line. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a founding member of the culture. Mm -hmm. I'm the first female MC of the culture. Mm -hmm. It is my duty to bring the realness to New York City and the Bronx for when the inception of hip hop started, especially for me. Right. And so, I, I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm gonna do that, and so and and, and with that, I got Dana Dane. You know Dana Dane, right? Dana that, Dane. That's, that's my homie. Brother. I went to him and I said, Dane, I said, mm -hmm. I need your help. Mm -hmm. I need for you mm -hmm. to make sure that you ensure that my script is wrote written the way that I want it. Yeah. So I'm on the phone with Dane 24/7. You know mm -hmm. he's out in California. You know mm -hmm. I'm on the phone for 24/7, 24/7, 24/7. You know, and so he wrote exactly. So Dana Dane wrote want. just the script. Yes. Wow, yes. that's Dana amazing. Dane. Yeah, Shout he did, Dana he Dane. did. And I wouldn't let anybody else come in mm -hmm. because I wanted Dane to have control. But I also have a consultant, Charlie Rock, who's actually, you know, um, he, he's like original member of the Zulu Nation, but he's a historian. Now I know a lot of stuff, right. but I needed the outside person to come in to 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 really like we're talking about a period, period piece. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the 70s. So everything has to be on point. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be on point of what was going down in the 70s at that time from the inception. Mm -hmm. So I have Charlie make sure that he's, you know, cross-referencing with, with Dana Dane. Mm -hmm. Dana Dane is the lead writer. He, wow, he's bringing it. He's bringing amazing. it. I'm okay. on the phone with him 24-7. So, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to be able to spread the love. Because, yes, we know hip-hop started in the Bronx. But I got people from Bronx, Harlem, Queens, Long Island, Atlanta. Everybody coming together mm -hmm. because this is story is very important to hip hop culture because it's an untold story that nobody knows yeah. or they thought they know or story that was suppressed. Mm -hmm. And so I brought everybody in to be able to bring their expertise in. And even if they don't know anything about that era, mm -hmm. they're learning it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? And everybody is rocking together to make sure that we bring you know, the heat to this story. The luminary icon. Together. Yeah. <laughs> the luminary icon story. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Well, thank you for blessing exactly. us with your presence. Thank you. Thank much, you so much. Yeah. yeah, we're honored, definitely, definitely. So we, we're going we to do more talking. Yeah, we yeah. And, and, and you guys, we definitely going to have to do this when it's, when that movie comes out. Yeah. you got to come back. And, of course, you know, course. you'll be there as well. Yeah, you know, to help. Give me a little cameo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But listen, no, I want you in it, though. Okay. I want you, yeah. yeah all you right. Know, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm in it. I'm in it. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I got you. Much respect.